Well, I went to an arms fair, arms and military fair yesterday and I picked up this item. Now you can see the size of it. Um, not sure exactly what it is. I picked it up for quite a good price. Uh, if I get a tape measure out, God, this is all to do. I wish I could remember to get a tripod out when I'm doing this, but there we go. Uh, 28 inches in length. So, just over 0.7 of a meter. Now, uh, what am I doing with this, you're going to ask? Well, because of my um, Scottish Borders roots um, being um, Border Reaver and stuff like that, and for those that don't know what a Border Reaver is, it's a Border Raider. Uh, basically, uh, 16th, 17th centuries and probably before that, um, the family would skip forwards and backwards across the border between Scotland and England and uh, go on raiding parties stealing cattle and whatever else um, of course um, this is round the uh, Northumberland um, Scotland area uh, the likes of Jedburgh, Kelso areas like that um, on, on the Scotland side and into Northumberland so um, anyway so uh, I was looking at this thing and I picked it up out of a bin full of swords and stuff and I thought that looks sort of interesting I could do things with that and straight away um, a little project which I've been wanting to work on for some time came to mind and it's the Jeddard Axe um, or Jeddard Staff which is a um, a Border Raiders um, pole arm um, now there's stuff on the internet you can research this and they don't know exactly what one looked like and they would have been made up by numerous blacksmiths around the time. Obviously, if it was being made for a couple of hundred years, then uh, that outlives the uh, lifespan of at least one blacksmith, probably four or more. So uh, it would have varied in design by quite a bit. There's a number of ideas of how they looked, but there's not really very, if any, remaining real ones that exist today. You can uh, get on the internet and you can put in Jeddard Staff, uh, spelt J-E-D-D-A-R-T, Jeddard Staff or Axe and you come to Wikipedia pages and so on and um, it actually says here sorry about my hand shaking, I use two hands um, the Jeddard staff or uh, oh, Jed, Jedburgh or Jedward staff is a pole arm of the 16th to 17th centuries uh, with a glavy like blade which is fixed to its haft by two sockets in the manner of a bar ditch um, from, d from D in the Caldwell classification okay now if we go and we look at what a bar ditch is it gives you this image here at the side now let's see we can enlarge that there we are so two sockets so basically that means you've got your, your 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 shaft and you've got two effectively like tubes which the shaft passes through 
and the blade is attached to these two tubular points. So there's obviously, as I say, there's variations on this design. Um, so that's a bar ditch. So we're looking for something which is not quite the sort of same style of blade. Now there's a company called, I think they're called Wolflund. Um, you can go to their website, but basically they make what they believe is their idea of a Jeddard axe. And you can see it here, it's very similar to a sword with a slight curve at the top. Yeah. Um, which is then mounted to a socket there. Then, further down what they've done is it's fixed, I'm going to say welded, but it would probably not be electrically welded, but it depends on how they're doing it, modern times, you know, so they might be electrically welding some of this work um, up here and there, and then um, grinding it back well and making it look um, you know, like it's been done in a traditional manner. Hard to say, um, unless I saw one being made. So, uh, that's how they've done it. Now, me, I tend to think if it says on Wikipedia that it should be mounted in, a two, in two sockets, then that implies that there should be a second socket all the way around the shaft here. But um, I'm fairly open-minded, as I say, if they, went, if they were being made for 200 years, the design would vary quite a bit. So anyone's idea of how one should look, um, you know, I don't think it's that much of a, an issue. So I like what they've done here, because they've effectively got rivets passing right through the wooden um, shaft which will um, you know so there's basically um, steel I can't think of the term now these f steel flats which run down on effectively all four sides if you want to say four sides on a shaft what the, the, the shafts basically going to be round in some places and squared off in other places so that these parts fit on it. Also, it's probably quite desirable to have the shaft made in a, uh, with a shape to it. Reason being, for instance, this is a pole arm. So if we go back um, a little bit and you look at the, the bar ditch and so on. Now, sometimes you would want to move your hands back down the shaft of this thing here. So you want to hold it one hand maybe your left down here and your right maybe about there. And in my book it would be desirable to know just by handling it which direction the blade is facing without you actually having to have a look at it. Um, yeah, so you're swinging it, so you're not doing something stupid and swinging it with the with the blade sticking backwards and so on. So it's a nice idea to to know what what way you're holding this thing straight off. So I actually like what uh, Wolfland's done there in the fact that they've put this disc hand guard on and um, the guard runs around the front. Of, of the of your hand as well so it, it protects it so it's um it's a nice idea and i would like to think that with the um, evolution of the um the weapon that would have come into play um i've seen other designs on pole axes where they have a hook on the back of here 
Now, basically what that is for is, well, there's a few ideas. You can have a hook which shapes like so, yeah, curves round, and that you can actually hook over stuff. For instance, if you want to scale over um, a wall or a fence or something like that, you hook that on, to on top of the fence and then you actually pull yourself up with the pole arm and climb over. So that's a quite nice thing. The other advantage of having something sticking out on the back is if you're defending yourself against another pole arm, you can catch it in that area there and block the other pole arm from coming down and hitting you. You can snag it, so so that's a good idea. Or even swords, you can stop a sword getting to you. But the idea with the pole arm, of course, is it gives you that extra distance, which a sword won't do. Effectively, this is very like a sword, however. So, you've got a sword, but you've got a shaft attached to that sword. So, it gives you the potential to have a lot more power behind a swing. Uh, you can move your hand out of this area and just use it as a conventional pole arm. And so, you've got something with a lot of power behind it and all this reinforcing of the metal coming down the wooden shaft is to prevent the shaft from, from breaking easily. The only point where you'll start to get potential for, a, for the shaft to break would be sort of down here, uh, past the actual point of support. Uh, and if you're using it two-handed and you've got your hand in that point, then that's going to probably reduce that in the swing. Now, back to this gadget. And you can sort of see where I'm coming from, I think, here. Um, I don't know what this has been. It could be that it's been a piece of um, farm tooling. I'm not well up on um, old farming um, equipment. Like It's not a scythe. It could be that it was mounted on a shaft and it was just for um, pruning trees, you know, um, and, and hedges, stuff which is out of the reach of, your, uh, of you by hand without getting on a ladder and so on. It could be that it that it's just something innocent like that. But, bear in mind, all these weapons, like the Jeddar axe, stemmed from the designs of farm equipment. Um, in many battles, people would have just turned up with farm equipment like this and used it you would not want to get hit across the neck by something like this. I don't know how old this is. The person who sold it me said could be a hundred years old, could be two hundred years old. He doesn't know. Um, I got it for a decent price. It's an unknown quantity. Don't know. If someone wants to contact me and tell me exactly what it um, is called and what it was for then please do but I'm toying around with um, a few little ideas with this first idea was just mount it on a on a on a shaft stick it up on the wall to hell with it it's it's a, a curio you know it's it's an unknown thing it's probably been used in may have been used in battles, may have just been a farming implement, it might be a reproduction, I don't know, but it's got some rust on it, um, some pitting, some age look into it, you know, so an unknown artefact. You see it's got that characteristic line down the back 
of the blade here on both sides there's no markings like a maker's name it just looks like it's uh, a bit of blacksmith work with a nice little hole here at the back um, it has got a little bit of recess in there for a screw so it could be that that's a bit of a modern idea whether they would have done that years ago recessing a hole like that for you know for something to to fit into a screw or a nail uh, you can see inside there's a line just in there where it's been formed round the metal's been formed round so it looks like it's been hammered out of one piece of steel then it's been formed round um, an arbor or something and then it's been welded along this edge here at the top so as to how it's been welded it might have been hammered in a forge or it might have been electrically welded if it's modern and then ground back hard to say either way it gives you a similar result it's not obviously electrically welded there's no sort of characteristic line inside of an electrical weld so I would go for it's been forge worked as it would have been if it was properly made a couple of hundred years ago anyway um, get in touch with me, with me people and give me an idea what you think this is but I'm toying around with doing some mods on this um, first mod will be to cut this off here and to weld sockets onto it so I'll be fitting a, a socket somewhere around about that point there because I want to give it plenty of blade up past the top of the shaft there you can see there so I want to have a reasonable amount of blade because um, well they actually used to chop people's heads off in battle with these things they used to get quite a bit of, of um, leverage um, in these things so uh, quite a nasty weapon they were very feared along the Scottish borders the, um, the Jeddard axe so I'll be welding a, um, a socket, a piece of round piping onto it there and then um, I'm tempted to actually weld an extra piece of steel on here and lengthen the blade and grind it in and make it look like it was an original piece if you notice what they've done here um, they've actually got the blade widens there and then narrows in and then it's welded to this steel pe uh, band that comes down so the parts where it's attaching to the blade I'm going to use um, electric welding and then hammer the um, the welds with a ball pane hammer so it looks like it's been worked on a forge then when it comes down here I'm intending to mount a disc on I think and then rivet it so this piece of metal that comes down here I'm thinking I'll put a bend at 90 degrees here and this piece here the handguard I'm going to I'm going to rivet them right through so I put holes through and I'm put about three rivets so it's through the disc through the handguard here and through a right angle bend on this piece here and then on the top flat I'm going to have um, the strip of steel come down right angle bend and then I'm going to have a flat um, on a flat steel strip running down the shaft on the on the top edge here and I'm going to bend that at right angles and I'm going to rivet that through 
So it's going to go through three pieces of metal that side and three pieces of metal on this side. And that will hope, hopefully hold the disc in a good position. Um, I could also bend the two strips on, on the left and the right out at right angles and rivet them to the disc. And that will give it um, a very uh, blacksmithy and solid uh, look to it. So basically it would be four pieces of metal bent out and attached to the disc. So that should be very strong. If it hit, if it gets blows on the on that disc there from this way, uh, it should be well attached and, and and not break off. Now the actual shaft, I don't know what I'm going to use for that. I've got a stretcher pole in my garage, which is quite thick and could be worked. Um, and shaped into an ideal sort of shape. Also, don't know what wood is used in it, but it's a stretcher pole. It was designed for carrying people. So, um, I would say it's probably pretty strong, um, probably a decent hardwood. So, that sounds like a, a plan to me. Anyway, um, get in touch with me. Let me know what you think. Um, I think I've got another view of the um, of the axe somewhere uh, now uh, yeah this is a uh, Wolflund um, picture there now you can see where they've attached it they haven't done much in the way of riveting so I don't know what they've done so they say I intend to bring steel down and bend it out at right angles there and rivet it through, same on the other side and top and here. I think it'll look better. You can see there, guard pack comes down and then it's riveted through and their piece of steel on the top is also riveted back through and then there's no steel once you get past that point there. So if that's riveted right through, if you're gonna have a, a failure of, this, of the wood shaft that's the point where it's going to break there where the steel disappears from its supporting uh, of the wood so that would be the point where it would fracture in my opinion you would want the wood on the sides to be a bit heavier once you get down to this area you want the wood at the back here to start to get larger so if I've got a um, a stretcher pole, it probably wants to be fairly heavy and robust once it gets to this area. Yeah, okay, let me know what you think guys, I think this could be a fun project. Um, yeah, so uh, my family name is Kerr, K-E-R-R, um, stem from like the Scottish Borders area originally. So, um, yeah, I thought it'd be quite interesting for a care to actually have a go at making a Jeddard axe. Let me know what you think.